Oh, everyone, how you doing? Got everybody. We're gonna give some. We're gonna give everyone a chance to come on in. Drop where you're from. Drop where you're from. You know what it is. Let me know where everybody's coming from. Let me know if we have any people. Where are you from? Come on. Chat's going now. Alabama. What's up, Chase? Alabama here. Good. Jefferson City. East Tennessee State University. I know, I know Jefferson City. <laughs> we got Calgary, Canada. We got Canada in here. That's good. All right, we're going to give everyone a chance to come into this to this webinar that's going to teach you a lot about how to make money as a commercial as a commercial model. We have a very, very, very special guest for you today. So make sure you're coming in with your questions. Good energy today. Make sure you have this is an interactive thing. So we have two different things going on right now. So um, a little housekeeping before we get going all the way. Uh, we're going to have two different chats going. The chat, the regular chat is going to be for any questions you guys want to ask. Uh, I'll try to get to them as much as I can, but the Q&A questions, uh, those will be for the very end. So we're going to spend about 10 to 15 minutes at the very end of this to, um, to uh, ask our, our special guest of honor, Talia, uh, any questions that you guys have. Okay, so we have regular chat for uh, in, the, in the middle of, the, of this webinar questions and then Q&A uh, questions for the end. All right, we're going to give them a little bit more time to come on in. And we're going to have polls going. All right. So we're going to be all over the place today. We're going to come in. We're going to get a lot of knowledge. We're going to get a lot of information for this young lady. So get your pins and pads ready. Get everything ready. And if I'm bringing too much energy today, you guys tell me to calm down, please. All right. Tell me to calm down if you need me to calm down, please. You guys are going to have a great time today. And in about a minute and a half, we're going to get this thing going. We're going to get it started. How's everybody feeling? Everybody okay? Everybody having a great day so far? A good morning for most. <laughs> good. Remember, guys, stay active in the chat. I'm going to give you a lot of questions. If you have any type of question, any at all, now is the time. You're going to have a professional in front of you, not me. The young lady that's going to be here. I'm not the professional. She is. So I'm going to give her the floor in a second. All right. We got people coming in. Chat's already going. Hello. Is everybody ready? Give me a thumbs up. Give me something. Give me something, chat. Are we ready to go? We're good. Shyla ready. Darcy's ready. Yes. All right, <clears throat> let me just go ahead and get it started. All right, so I'm going to give a, a slight introduction, an introduction to who we have in front of us today. Uh, she is world renowned. She's going to bring us 10 plus years of experience as an agent. And now she's the director of MMG in New York City, the Big Apple, where everybody wants to get to, right? So we have her in front of us and her resume is unrivaled. She's put people in TV. Does anybody know a little show by the name of Project Runway? She's put a lot of people in there. <laughs> um, so she's done that. NBC's FBI and uh, print, commercial, a whole a range of um, models and actors in this industry. She has been a part of doing that. So when it comes to putting people in the right position, to actually be as productive as they can be as models and actors. She has put a lot of campaigns together. She's been a part of all these things. I'm gonna give her all her kudos right now and then I'm gonna give her the floor. Uh, she's been a part of Nike, uh, Clinique, uh, Ralph Lauren, L'Oreal Paris, uh, Louis Vuitton, who doesn't like that? I'm still trying to get that bag, by the way. So um, those are just to name a few campaigns that she's been a part of and New York Fashion Week and Miami Swim Week. So without further ado, all right, we're gonna give the floor to our guest of honor, Ms. Talia Perigo. How are you doing today? Hi everyone, it is so awesome to be here. I love doing the all casting webinars and getting to connect with all these aspiring models and actors from all over the country. I'm yes. super, super excited to get to chat with you all today. Like he said, I have 10 years of experience. I have been an agent in New York City. I also book in LA, Dallas, Miami, uh, you name it, I've done it. Print, commercial, runway, TV shows, movies. So I've got a really wide range of experience 
experience across the entire industry. Um, and I'm hoping I'm going to be able to share lots of that knowledge today and hopefully get to advance your careers. Yes. All right, Talia, first question. First question I lead with, how are you doing mentally? How are you doing today? Your energy's good. How are we feeling? Yes, we are good. We're psyched. I love doing these webinars. It is awesome getting to connect with so many people all across the country. So I'm so excited. Keep the questions coming. I'm ready for the Q&A. Don't be yes. shy. There's no dumb questions. Bring it all today. That's why I'm here. You have me for one hour. So use me as that resource. We got an hour on the dot because I feel like we're trying. We're going to go to hour 15 for all the energy that we have right now. So um, <laughs> let's start it off. Let's start off with the first question. Let's talk about the different types of modeling and the different areas of modeling. Which ones um, are you familiar with? And let's just give them a rundown of, you know, what types of modeling that they can do and how they can get into it. Absolutely. So there is a type of modeling for everyone. And I want to be really clear about uh, that. There is so many different areas of the modeling industry. Um, and with that being said, just because you see one type of model doing one type of, um, you know, type of job, or you see something in a movie, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily apply to you. So your career path is going to be your own unique career path. And you're going to have to forge that based on what is appropriate for you. So we've got a few different areas of the modeling industry um, that I'm just going to run through quickly. So you can kind of take note of the different categories and where you might fall in those categories. So first and foremost is what we're mostly here to talk about today and what I think most of you guys will probably fall into. And that's going to be commercial print modeling. That is the biggest area of the industry, despite what people think. You know, people think about high fashion models and runway and, you know, really, really tall and skinny. That's a super small part of the industry. The commercial print industry is what you don't even realize that you're seeing and being exposed to every day. So when you're sitting on the couch and you're watching the morning news or you got one of your shows going and a commercial pops up, Nine times out of 10, it's not a Gucci commercial. It's McDonald's or it's Advil or it's United Healthcare. <laughs> you know, all those jingles you can't get out of your head. Uh, those commercials where you're like, oh, I've seen this a hundred times. That's commercial print models, baby. Um, and that is the one of the most common areas of the industry. Or when you're driving down the highway and you see billboards or you're walking through a Nike store and there's models on the wall. That all encompasses commercial print modeling. And what it basically means is, you know, they're looking for real authentic people. Yes, they want you to be attractive, don't get me wrong, but they want relatable <laughs> models. They don't want size zeros. They don't want, you know, 5'10 only for women or 6'2 for men, because that doesn't relate to 90% of Americans, right? So commercial print modeling right. for most of the clients does not have height restrictions. You do not have to be six foot tall to do Colgate toothpaste, okay? <laughs> so, so, all right, so with that being said, yeah. one question, I'm gonna interrupt. So with that being said, like, so when you have that, like what, what type of skills do they have to come in with? Let me ask that. How do they have to come in and approach this? What type of skills do they have to have? Sure. So um, big thing with commercial modeling is um, the three Ps personality, uh -oh. presence, and professionalism. There we go. Okay? There we go. There's a lot of good looking people out there. What's gonna set you <laughs> apart from the other, you know, hot dude in the room? You know what I That's mean? Right. So you got to walk in there. You got to have good vibes. You've got to give off a presence. You've got to be confident. Mm -hmm. You've got to be professional. You have to show them that they're somebody that you want in the room when they're doing a photo shoot. They don't want someone in the room who's just sitting over there being cold. No, you want vibes, right? Like we want the vibes going right now. So when you are, you know, trying to, you know, impress an agent and press a casting director, show your personality, show you want this, show you're respectful, show you're professional. Mm -hmm. So in terms of skills, you know, we can't really, you know, work to be good looking. We can't work to have the measurements they're looking for. Um, but right. you can work on being photogenic and you can work on posing and getting comfortable behind the camera. So the three Ps, professionalism, yes. presence. Um, and then we've got um, personality is the big one. 
And then also obviously, you know, getting comfortable behind the camera, working it, learning your angles, learning how to flow on set. Mm -hmm. So make sure you guys, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat right now. Make sure we have a QA and a going at the end, by the way. Okay. So with this, with the three P's, all right, you know, doing things on your own, what type of training can you get uh, in person? Let's start with in person first in their respective cities. Are there any, is there like a network that they can go through? Is there, I mean, you can have allcasting.com, but are there anything that they can go to to say, okay, I can sharpen my sword, I can sharpen up my skills a little bit. And in your, like in your years of being, you know, an, an agent, uh, what have you seen that works the best for a person sharpening their edges and trying to get into commercial, uh, in, to commercial modeling? Okay, so we've got two types of training for commercial modeling. We've got on-camera okay. commercial training, all right? On-camera commercial training. This can be found in any major city at any major film or acting school. So New York City, you're gonna find this. LA, mm -hmm. you're gonna find this. Miami, Chicago, Dallas. Um, so on-camera commercial training. Two, audition technique training. This is also extremely important because so much is done via self tapes right now. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, most people don't know how to do a proper self tape. And then get out of here. Oh, the <laughs> amount of self tape takes to work. You know, we've got mom vacuuming in the background. You know, we've got the dog jumping on the couch. Get a dog. It's dark. I can't see their faces. Oh, yep. my goodness. Yep. So learning how to do a self-tape. So audition technique training, what's going to set your self-tape apart from the rest. And then learning how to do posing. This is a little trickier. Um, there's not a whole lot of legitimate modeling training across the country. However, there are a few schools in New York City specific. There's one called Model Camp. They do boot camps every few, you know, every few months. And then we've got Coco Rocha's modeling school out of New York also very reputable. Um, but if you're not really in New York um, or um, you know an LA, so if you're in an in-between city, focusing on the commercial uh, on camera training and audition technique, those are gonna be really valuable uh, for your commercial print career. Gotcha. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna actually ask the question to the chat right now. So um, what field of modeling would everybody want to get into? So we've given you a lot of information on different types of modeling and different fields of where you can get into what type what field are you interested in getting into drop it in the chat we're going to come to it and also if you guys have any questions make sure you're asking them right now commercial 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 all right we're in commercial all right so um we're going to go with one of the questions i saw somebody um we have Leon, uh, Miss Johnson, we have, are you taking more seriously? This is a question for you, uh, Talia. Are you taking more ser seriously as a model when you have an agent? So that's a really good question. So all casting is a really awesome platform for beginner model and actors like you guys to start gaining exposure, taking these webinars, applying to the lower level castings um, and you know some of the smaller budget gigs mm -hmm. that they go to the general public for. However, once it gets to a certain point in the industry for both television, film, commercial, and print, they will only go through agencies for major campaigns because of how high, um, you know, how the highest the stakes are for those campaigns. If they're investing $10,000 into the campaign, they want to make sure the contracts are signed, the model is showing up, the, the, you know, the, the T's are crossed, mm -hmm. the I's are dotted. So they're only going to go through agents That's for right. any major television um, or film role or any very high budget TV, yeah. I'm sorry, commercial or print campaign. So it's not necessarily that you're not going to be taken seriously without an agent. Of course, if you show up and you're professional, they're going to take you seriously, but you're not going to have mm -hmm. access to the higher level jobs without signing yeah. to an agency. Yes, all right. So, all right. So we're going to talk about big brand versus small brand or eco, eco, e, e like the smaller, I don't want to say small brand. I hate to be like, hate to like take a guy down. So we're going to say small brand versus, you know, somebody who's a little bit more to the people, <laughs> you know what I mean? So what's the difference between those two? Let's talk about the big brand first. Um, what is the difference between those two and how do you step into those? Let's talk about the big brand first. 
Great. So the big brands, you know, so this is going to be your everyday, you know, the ones that everyone knows, Gap, Colt, Nike, Converse, Levi's, you know, the brands that you see on TV, the brands that you see in the magazines on, on the famous models. So these are the brands that you're only going to have access to via agencies. Mm -hmm. So what happens is we've got a marketing company and they're coming up with these commercials. They're coming up with these print campaigns and let's say the brand, the big brand goes to one of these advertising agencies and they say, we want to sell this. And they give them a shoe or a shirt or a line. Yeah. And then the mm -hmm. advertising agency is going to come up with the concept. And um, hi, Maria. Thank you. <laughs> well, so you got somebody in here representing right now. Come on. Yes. You got to give her a shot. You got to give her love. Um, <laughs> uh, yes. She works with Aviva, our vice president too. Uh, lots of love. Um, so so, um, you know, the, once the advertising agency puts together, you know, the commercial or the print campaign, they then hire a casting director to find the model to fill those shoes. And that casting director, most of the time is going to go directly to agencies. They're not going to post those jobs um, on public domains like backstage or all casting. Um, because right. again, these are really, really complicated contracts that are 20 pages long, but definitely need legal, you know, review and things like that. Um, so, you know, it's just really important, you know, for the big brands to exclusively go through agencies. Um, if we're talking about the small brands, um, that, that is, um, <laughs> often referred to as more boutique jobs. Okay. So they're usually smaller boutiques, up and coming designers, you know, new brands, um, who don't have a solid flow of income yet, or aren't in, you know, in a profit margin yet. And so they've got to be a little bit more careful about their, their marketing and they don't have as big of budgets. This does not mean it's not a good job. It doesn't mean it's an illegitimate job. And it doesn't mean it can't be super valuable to your career. Um, all of these little jobs, um, they stack up. And yes. these little jobs, these small brands, these up and coming, these boutiques, they are going to give you tear sheets. And that is so valuable. That's going to show any prospective agent or casting director that you've done a job before. You've been in front of the camera. You know what it's like to be on set. You're not a rookie and you're stepping in with, an, with a level of experience. So those small jobs, they rack up and they count. Good. So guys, don't stri don't shy away from the small jobs. Don't go for the big guys. If they come knocking, go for it. But remember, the small jobs they they stack up. So let's make sure we're doing that. All right. So um, we have Wade. He has a question. Uh, all right. Okay. So older older individuals. All right. Older individuals. Uh, how? What do? What in your opinion, Talia? What are you looking for in an older individual trying to break into the commercial modeling? Okay, so that we call that lifestyle modeling. Um, and yeah. I would advise that you guys check out the MMG Instagram. I'll drop it in the chat. We have recently posted some really awesome campaigns that our mature models have done. Um, and so, you know, if you take a look at those campaigns, we've got some of our women doing hair care skincare, some of our men doing um, apparel related stuff. Um, so, you know, obviously if you are starting out as a lifestyle or mature model, as the terms are used within the industry, again, we're going back to the three P's. Um, what's important is looking healthy um, but again, being relatable. So you're, they're not going to be like, again, expecting you to be super skinny or super fit. They're going to want to relate to their client base and the over 40, over 50 client base is going to want to look at models on the, on commercials that relate to them. Um, right. so it's really not any different than starting out your career at 20 years old. Um, you know, the women that, um, I even booked a 62 year old woman on a skims campaign. Okay. With Kim Kardashian. Oh, wow. So let me tell you, she slayed and she looked good. Um, yes. and I'm sure that you guys are kind of seeing, there's been a bit of return in the market to the mature supermodel. So we're seeing Cindy Crawford back on the runway, right? We're seeing Lisa Evangelista, yes. Evangelista. Naomi, psh, she can't be stopped. 
All of these yeah. 90s were models in their <laughs> 40s and 50s. They are back on the runway. They are back in vogue and they are taking back over the scene, you know? So right. if they can do it, so can you. Um, and, you know, runway isn't really an area for the mature model, um, but commercial and print, I mean, there are plenty of jobs out there within that age range. Absolutely. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to drop another. This is for all the participants. Drop it in the chat. Drop your answers in the chat. Who in here has done commercial modeling and what have you done? If you can give us a little bit of information on what you've done. Uh, who's done it, where you've done it, how long you did it. If you did a campaign, drop it in there. Let's be interactive a little bit. Also remember, let's go to the Q&A. Don't forget about your Q&A. We got, we got, if you have great questions to ask her at the end, make sure you're dropping them in there, all right? So we're gonna talk about the major player right now, which is money. How do we make money? How are we making money in this thing, right? So the first question is, um, what are the different earning tiers? when it comes to uh, commercial modeling. Absolutely. So there's a few different things to keep in mind. Um, one thing that I want to explain really quickly, which a lot of people might not be familiar for, with is the term usage. So when you book a print campaign or a commercial, it always will come with predetermined usage and usage means how long it can be used for and where it can be used. So if you're booking a boutique brand, a smaller up and coming designer, they might only do a three month usage just for social media. That's pretty small. That's probably going to pay somewhere in the 300 to $500 range. As you add to the usage and as you add to the time and the places it can be used, we are going to see those numbers bump up and up and up. So if it's used for one year online, in print, in store, on media, yep. then we're going to start to be looking at some really nice numbers. So the average modeling job in New York City is going to pay about 1500 to 2500 typically one day only. Sometimes it can be multiple um, shoot days. Now that's for New York. New York is the Super Bowl of the modeling for the U.S. So each, um, there's four fashion capitals. We've got New York, Milan, London, and Paris, of course. So those four cities are where you're going to see those bigger numbers. In smaller markets, um, if it's a regional release, so that means it might only be, you know, uh, broadcasted in your county, um, you know, if it's a, you know, strictly social media release, um, you know, if we're talking about the smaller markets, we're looking at the Dallas, the Chicago's, Miami's, Orlando, that's when the numbers are not going to be as impressive for, as the New York City market. Um, and then there's just the factor of union rates to talk about very quickly. So, this can be a little bit confusing. I'll try to make it as simple as possible. But if a job falls under union jurisdiction, the rates are controlled by the union, which can be good and can be bad. So that means that it's a set rate that the union provides for all commercials or all TV shows or all movies for a day player role or you know whatever type of role that you've secured. However, so with, with union jobs, there's not usage set as strictly because it's more in relation to royalties. So every time that commercial gets aired, you get paid. Or every time that blacklist rerun shows from season one, you get a check in the mail six months later. So, um, you know, with non-union jobs, which is mostly print and some commercials, you're just going to get a clean cut paycheck. If it's a union job, it's gonna work a little bit more off of residuals. And so you might not know really how much you're gonna make off of the job until you kind of, you know, it's been six months and you've seen how many times it airs. Typically, if you have a national campaigns union, we're talking like 50 grand a year, people, okay? We are talking about paying rent, paying your mortgage. You're gonna to go to bed at night, you're gonna sleep well, okay? 
So it is every commercial print model or actor's dream to land that one national SAG commercial that's going to keep them coasting through the year. And then you'll be able to sum- supplement with that those non-union commercials and those print campaigns in between. All right, let's talk about the experience that you have to have to get onto that stage. Like what type of experience are we talking about? Do you have, like to get, let's say onto the SAG, on, into the union work. Uh, do you have to have an agent? Do you have to have a set amount of years of experience or do you just get lucky and get into that spot? Uh, how does that work? So there's certainly those who get lucky. But yeah. most <laughs> work their butts off to get there. Um, right. Most commercial SAG national commercials do cast through agencies, but not every single one. There's exceptions to every rule. There is no concrete black and white when it comes to modeling and acting. So everything I'm saying, take it with a grain of salt and realize you could be the exception to what I'm saying. However, for most, um, first off, to become um, you know eligible to join the union, you have to be have to have done three union jobs. But I just want to reiterate, you don't have to be in the union to work on a union job, okay? So you can be, you know, your first job and do it, do a union project. That um, is totally doable. Now, to land a really strong commercial agent, uh, you know, on-camera commercial agent who is dealing primarily with these SAG um, and union commercials, the money commercials, they are going to want to see a resume, okay? So it's very different from, you know, standard print modeling. There's no such thing as a modeling resume. You show up to my office with a resume for print modeling. I know you haven't done your homework because that's not a thing, okay? Um, If you are, you know, showing up to a commercial TV film um, acting, you know, you know, uh, agency, that's when you show up with your headshot and your resume ready. And they're going to go to your resume and they're certainly going to want to see some degree of training and experience, um, you know, in order to sign you. They'll probably also ask you to prepare a monologue or a commercial, or they might even have you do a cold read at the agency, meaning they just hand you a script and you got to go. So you kind of got to be ready for anything in those circumstances. Um, but ultimately, they want somebody who can clearly deliver, has diction, stage presence, can connect with the camera, and has ex- experience on set. It's going to know the terminology that they're saying you know if they say you know quiet on set what does that actually mean you know we see it in the movies but what does that mean right that means the crew is quiet and your turn to go you're not quiet <laughs> you're the actor you're the model so we're gonna want somebody who can seamlessly integrate with these you know high level brands and and companies and can can thrive on these sets and handle these long days uh you know with professionalism and be able to deliver Okay, with all that experience that you have, uh, let's talk about, all right, so we get the experience, we get in the campaign, we get in front of the camera, what are the different pay rates, half day, full day, you know, hourly, whatever it may be. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the different types of pay that you have. And, you know, with different levels, it comes different pay. I know we talk of 50 grand a day sometimes, but uh, just talk about, you know, the different pay rates, hourly, full day, half day, wherever you want to take it. Okay. So I'm going to very quickly go over kids in case we've got any moms or dads in the chat wondering about their little ones. Kids get the short end of the stick. Okay. So kids, mm-hmm. we're usually looking at 150 an hour for a three hour minimum. I know, not super glamorous, but they're little. They probably can't handle more than three hours anyways. I barely can, and I'm definitely not six years old. Um, So very quickly for the kids, um, a half day is going to be more in the 400 range, and a full day is going to be more in the 800 range. Kiddos, I'm so sorry, but you guys don't have rent to pay, so it's different. (laughs) Uh, And we're looking at full day, half day rates for adult modeling, that's, you know, going to be pretty different. So again, it does depend on the usage of the job um, and, you know, where that job is going to be used, how long it's going to be used for. But typically the, you know, a day rate, um, we're always going to push for $2,500 a day for the day rate. Okay. That is going to be kind of like our go-to number for any of our seasoned models. A lot of models won't, seasoned models won't work for under 1500 a day. Um, I, there's a joke, you know, 
that supermodels don't get out of bed for under 10,000 a day. Um, <laughs> I wish I could say 10, that. $10,000 a day. <laughs> um, good lord but for most standard models signed to you know you know good strong modeling agencies in new york city working on you know big brands you know old navy l'oreal we're going to be looking at 2500 a day um as your day rate um so a full day is eight hours a half day is four hours um, and we love a good overtime. Okay. We, go. <laughs> um, <laughs> we love when we run into overtime, obviously those hours get racked up. So a half day is going to be somewhere in the seven fifty to a thousand dollar range. Um, it's difficult to pull off a half day shoot for a full production. Half day shoots are way more common with smaller brands and children just because children can't last the eight hours. <laughs> yeah. um, but um, half day shoots are not very commonly used for any major production um, because it's just impossible to fit everything in in four hours. Girls, we know hair and makeup takes an hour on its own, okay? So <laughs> you, man, you just jump in front of the camera. I jump uh, in, we're okay. ready to go. Where's the camera, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but, so most of the time you should be expecting a, you know, if they say, you know, we need you for a day, you should expect an eight hour day. Um, some, and, you know, make sure that there's overtime, uh, you know, always accounted for and what those rates will look like in advance, how much you'll get paid per hour after that. Um, and the average is going to be between 1500 to 2,500, 2,500 being kind of like the standard bar half days being between 750 and a thousand, except for the kiddos, we're looking at more 400, 300, even right. some. I got you. All right. So, all right. So we've heard a lot of information, a whole lot of information, how to get in front of the camera, how to actually get um, all the experience that you need. So we're going to talk about a little bit. Of, we're going to go a little bit off script and I'm going to talk about MMG, right? MMG is this huge, huge modeling agency, right? So how does one get in front of Talia? How do we get in front of you? Oh, shoot. You put me on the spot. <laughs> I know, right? No, so, so how, uh, what are the steps that they need? What are you looking for when you look in representation? Trying absolutely. to represent somebody. So there's, there's a few ways to get, um, you know, get in touch with an agency and get seen by an agent. So mm -hmm. social media is a really big part of the industry nowadays. So I just want to touch upon that uh, quickly mm -hmm. as I get a lot of DMs. Okay. Um, I'm never going to turn away somebody trying to better their career or advance their career, but I do ask you put in the research first, you know, yeah, right. look, you know, you know, don't come to me and say, Hey, how can I apply to MMG? Well, did you go to the website? Did you check out my Instagram? Is my email maybe in my bio with instructions on how to submit? There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's important to know what to submit and how to present yourself professionally. So I don't want a bunch of selfies. Don't be sending me pictures with sunglasses on, you know, pictures with your friends with them cropped out and just you in the middle. You yes. really want to make sure you're putting your best foot forward, presenting yourself professionally, showing that you're somebody that's going to be really easy to work with, someone who's going to be able to take direction, someone who's going to be able to put together a literate email, as crazy as that sounds. <laughs> Don't start the email with, hey, you know, treat this as a professional job interview, right? Come in and yes. show me what you got. And I want to see what you got. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, taking a clean set of professional digitals, having everything compiled into one easy link that's, you know, uh, you know, available to view Dropbox, we transfer Google photos. Hi, see link here for my digitals. When I see right. that my day is made, I don't want to yes. go through 10 attachments on an email. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you've got, you know, professional photos link to my portfolio mm -hmm. measurements below show up with the information that agencies require and Google it. If you don't know, if you're not sure what measurements to send, if you're not sure what kind of photos are, it's easy. What types of photos do modeling agencies want to see? What mm -hmm. measurements do modeling agencies want to see before you come to me, right. put in the work on your end and make sure that you're showing up with the proper materials. So, That's right. 
I do accept submissions year round. I do scout on a rolling basis because the demands of the market are changing every day and the models they're loving today could change tomorrow and they might be looking for something different. So I do accept, um, you know, submissions through my email. Our agency also has submissions available on our website. We do scout at all the major conventions like IMTA. I saw someone just dropped PMTM in there. A great other agency who brings her agency, her, her kids to the PM, uh, IMTA competition. I saw someone else that they did the IMTA competition. That's a really big modeling and acting convention in New York City and LA. So we attend all the major scouting events. And then we also allow submissions, you know, directly through our emails and website year round as well. Okay. So, all right. So we have all those, how to get in front of Talia, how there are steps that you need to take. As you heard, there are steps that you need to take and there are dot, there's I's that need to be dotted and T's that need to be crossed. So make sure you're doing your part when you get in front of her so she can just say, all right, I want this person on my roster right now. So make uh, put your best foot forward when it comes to that. Um, let's talk about IMTA. So how do you get into those things? Because you scout those things. You scour those, yeah. um, those, those seminars. How do you get um, into those to actually get, you know, on the stage and all those performances that you get in front of you? Those are cold reads as well as I assume, right? So there's lots of competitions. It's the IMTA. There's there's multiple conventions of all different shape, shapes, and sizes. I'm going to use IMTA as the main example because that is the mother load. That yeah. is where Jessica Beal got scouted, Josh Dumel, Ashton Kutcher, Mila right. Kunis. I mean, we are talking um, a lot of huge major celebrities. So I'm going to use IMTA kind of as the example, but that's not to say that there's lots of smaller conventions and organizations throughout the country that are phenomenal as well so for some mm -hmm. of these conventions um you have to attend through a mother agency like imta does and the mother agent's job is to prep you so they're going to do classes with you they're going to do photo shoots they're going to teach you how to do a monologue they're going to teach you how to do a commercial they're going to teach you how to walk that runway okay so right, the right, show up the right way yes the right <laughs> way, the right way. <laughs> absolutely yes so um you know having a mother agent or modeling or acting school. Um, it just kind of depends on where you're, where you're located, what's going to be accessible to you um, are going to be, you know, important kind of first steps. Now there's other yeah. conventions that are smaller scale and might be run directly by their own modeling school or their own mother agency in which they are, do, you know, the training directly with the talent and then host their own convention or showcase and invite agents to attend. So talent showcases, agency showcases, um, these are all really great opportunities to further your training and exposure. So we've got, just for example, we've got IMTA New York coming up next month in June, the last week of June, there will be 200 agents attending all the top agents from across the country. So I'm of course going to oh be God. there, but so are 200 other huge agents. Um, <laughs> and I think we've got like eight, a hundred to a thousand contestants. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, Expo in Dallas is another Expo. great one. There's tons all across the country. Like I said, I was just using IMT kind of as a base example. We've got Expo, we've got IPOP, we've got Launch. Um, mm -hmm. So that's Chicago, Dallas, LA, I just hit. Um, yeah. And so those are great opportunities to get in front of agents as well, um, depending on your career level. So those are more for beginner talent who are kind of, you know, need, need to learn the ropes, don't know where to start. Um, you know, so those are, you know, kind of more for beginner talent. If you're a little more experienced, you can probably start extending, um, you know, just, just submitting to the agencies directly. Cause you've kind of got a resume going on. So it depends a bit on your experience level, where in the country you're located and what you have accessibility to, um, and kind of what areas you need the most help in. And if you're having trouble getting exposure, these conventions and showcases can be super valuable. Exposure is everything, people. Exposure. Expose, expose, expose. Get the training that you need um, and get your exposure and then you can get in front of these people. So I want to ask you one question about um, a lot of people don't like to invest in themselves. Right? <laughs> so I'm an invest in myself type guy. Um, so how in the world does a person, because, you know, times are hard sometimes, I get it. But how do you invest in yourself um, from, you know, a, a, a more... I call it a fiscal standpoint, you know, I won't call it cheap. a fiscal standpoint, a financially responsible standpoint, how, what things can you do um, at home? Let's say at home that can actually help your career. So 
first thing that's, you know, really important is you do have to invest into yourself. Um, and you know, a lot of people think like, you know, you, you to become a movie star or a model or an actor, everything's paid your way. You get flown out. Your photo shoots are paid for girl. That cannot be further than the truth. That is, that is, you know, that is the age of the '90s supermodel when we had these big millionaires bankrolling these girls, and that's where things went way south. Now everything is on the up and up, and it's on these models and talent to invest into themselves. So, get your photos right, get your training right, make sure that you are allocating the proper time and resources to advance your career. If you're trying to become an NFL player, you're not going to watch YouTube videos on how to play football. You're going to hire a really good coach, right? That's the point. That's the point. Yes. So you gotta, you know, you gotta invest into your photos. You gotta invest into your training. However, there are resources that you can access from home, just like this webinar right here. This is an awesome example of all of you people who are tuned in right now, looking to further your career, looking to learn, looking to, you know, connect with an agency. This is it. You're doing the work right now by sitting and being on this call. Okay. And there are lots of actually good YouTube videos on modeling, on audition technique, on doing self tapes. Um, And there's lots of virtual classes and webinars and things like that, that you can um, participate in as well. So while there is an extent, an amount that you can do at home and, you know, feel free, there, that's gonna, there's gonna be a serious ceiling on that. And that's when you gotta save, you gotta grind, you gotta hustle and you gotta invest into the right materials and training for sure. There is no way to get around that. Nobody's gonna do your photo shoot for free who's an established fashion photographer. They got bills to pay too. Nobody's gonna give you training for free. They, you know, they're working hard to provide those services for you. So it's also important to respect people, especially photographers, don't go out asking for free shoots. That will reflect poorly on you. It will come off as disrespectful and unprofessional training. Good training costs money. So make yes. sure that you are allocating time and funds, but there are also you know, resources that you can access from home to at least educate yourself and build a foundation yes. for where to invest into. So how important is coaching to you? How important is getting uh, constant, I won't say constant coaching, but you know, things change and this industry always ebbs and flows and things go in different directions. So how important is it to stay um, hip to what's going on in the industry with coaching and, and education for you? If you see that on someone's resume. Absolutely. So um, it's really, it can be really valuable, um, especially when I'm going to a convention like IMTA, there are mm-hmm. certain mother agencies and schools that I know really whip those models and actors into shape. I yeah. know that I sign those people after the convention, their self tapes are going to look good. They're going right. to know what you know, usage means. They're going to understand the lingo. They're going to know mm-hmm. how to slate. It's going to be a lot less work for me. Um, right. Well, that being said, it can be quite difficult to find legitimate coaching and training. So if somebody comes in to me with training, from a school that is not considered, you know, to be, you know, as high level or in depth with their models or actors that sometimes can create extra work for me because they might've been misinformed or not properly taught. So there's kind of becomes, you know, a little bit of a balance for print work. There's very Mm -hmm. little coaching that can, you know, really go into it. You know, you either kind of know how to pose behind the camera and you're photogenic or not. Um, for commercials and for at more actors, training is just absolutely imperative. You need to learn how to slate. You need to learn how to self-tape. You need to learn, you know, what to do when you walk into an ad- audition room. Something is as right. simple as do you look in the casting director's eyes or above their head? How many people know the right. answer to that one? Who knows the answer? <laughs> <laughs> you better you better put the right answer in the above. chat. Above, yes. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> creeps us out first off Do you to be into in your monologue step. like this <laughs> so my uh, first, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you a little story my first audition i looked them in the eye <laughs> way way back and uh i scared them let's just say that 
<laughs> just say, Especially if it's a scary monologue. Like, I'm like, whoa, yeah. whoa. Okay, yeah. so yeah, <laughs> little, little things like that. If you don't have training, if you don't have education, if you haven't at least read an article on the internet, you're not going to know. So I'm All so my excited. training went out of the window in that, in that scenario. <laughs> All the training. I was like, I'm freaked out right now. Amazing. I'm so glad to see how many people know. Look above, pick a spot on the Look wall, up to that spot. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. So, all right. We've get we've given a lot of information, Talia. We've given a lot of information. So I appreciate you for giving all your expertise and uh, information to everyone that stayed. We're gonna go to the Q and A now. Uh, so we're gonna start um, with the first question. And yeah, everybody's chatting above. Thank you guys. Stay on it. My, make sure you know something from this. We're going to <laughs> stay above, keep our eye gaze above the head. Uh, so is there such thing as doing too many little gigs? Um, is there a such thing, Tali, as doing too many little gigs that hurt your chances of getting a bigger gig? So there's kind of two answers to this question. So in acting, you never want to be brand yourself as a background or extra actor. If someone mm -hmm. comes in, you know, to an acting agency, um, and I've done a lot of acting work in years prior, so I can speak to this, um, and their entire resume is extra background work, that's a huge red flag. First and foremost, that work should not even go on a resume that is just for personal experience. Anybody can be hired sure. as a background actor or an extra. So it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't show that you've got acting skill. It, you know, so it really should not go on a resume. Right. So if somebody comes in um, you know, and you're a career background actor, it's not a great look. There's also issues with continuity in TV shows. Right. So imagine this, if you were an mm -hmm. extra in season one of Law & Order, you can never come back and be on Law & Order again. And we're on season 22, they don't care. If your face was seen for even one second, it, you can't even do a one-liner now, okay? So don't waste all your valuable shows on extra or, or TV shows. Um, in the modeling side of things, right. yes, it can also be damaging to, um, if it's low quality, if it's lots of little jobs yeah. where the photography is clean, it's beautiful, you look great. You know, you've got produced amazing images mm -hmm. from it. The hair sheets are look professional. They're retouched. They look good. The makeup is natural and nice. That can't hurt. It starts to hurt when you're working with low tier brands who really aren't putting in the legwork to ensure quality control. Or you've got these right. TFP photographers who are shooting for boutiques. Um, and you've got, you know, a whole Instagram page full of, yes. you know, really low quality material. Yeah. You are, there's a saying in the modeling world, you are only as strong as your weakest photo. Okay. So if I'm going through your Instagram and it's all average, 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 average photos, because you're working with all these low brands that just brings yeah. your quality down. So yes, right. it certainly can get to a point where it can be a hindrance. Okay. All right. So everybody heard that information and we're going to move on to the next question. How much, this is a, this is a tricky question. How much can I ask for when it comes to commercial modeling? That's a very specific question. How much can I ask for, for commercial modeling? Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> darn. Okay. So if you're <laughs> I usually suggest always start high. Okay. I usually suggest saying that you have a 250 an hour minimum with a two hour minimum. So that's going to give you $500. Um, if it's a lower tier brand, they're going to come back and say that's out of budget. And I would say you really right. shouldn't go below 150 an hour with a two hour minimum. So start high, always, you know, put yourself on a pedestal. Um, but that's also why it's really important to have an agent who can negotiate those rates on your behalf. And if I'm saying, uh-uh, they cost 500, they're not going to say no to yeah. me. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, in general, I would start with 250 an hour with a two hour minimum and, yeah. you know, work it down, uh, to the minimum 150 an hour with a two hour minimum. All right, just make sure we're trying to get an agent like Talia, please, because she has the muscle to do this. Come on now, let's get our experience up and let's get her into her, in the, let's get on her roster. All right, um, 
this is a question from both of us, but I'm gonna let you answer this because this is your time to talk. Uh, in your opinion, is modeling more competitive for males or females? I'm gonna let you have the floor on that one. Go ahead. Uh, Go for okay. It. This is <laughs> such an interesting question. It is the only industry in the United States where the pay gap is switched. It is the only really? industry where women make a lot more than men. Okay. I am so sorry, boys, but this is our time. <laughs> um, Absolutely. So it is, um, it's, 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 it can go both ways. The men's industry is smaller, but far less saturated. The women's industry is infinitely larger, but way oversaturated. So if you're a woman mm -hmm. you're unique and cool and different and fun and got something fresh to bring, um, then, you know, it's not going to be as competitive. If you look like right. me and you're trying to be a model, you are going to be next to uh, thousands of other girls, okay? <laughs> so, you know, the Caucasian industry is oversaturated as heck mm -hmm. right now. So for men, yeah. it's smaller, um, you know, so there's mm -hmm. less jobs, but, you know, you know, also less people doing it. So there's kind of two sides right. to the coin. I would say it's more, at the end of the day, yes, I would say that there, it is more compact, com competitive for men just because there's fewer jobs available. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So I know how competitive it is and I fight for everything that I have. So you got to come in with a little bit different, like the attitude that you have going into this, into the room, you, I call it winning the room. So I go in to win the room with whatever, Ever I can put on. So whether it's my physique or the way I talk, you know, it's one of those things where I, no matter how competitive it is, I got to put something out there that stands out. So remember, put your best foot forward, people. All right. So what are some, the next question, what are some good teaching uh, and learning classes uh, that, in your opinion, what are some good classes that you've seen that, that really work really, really, really well uh, for people that can actually get into it? Obvi of course. So obviously I'm based in New York City, so most of my knowledge is here, but most of yeah. the acting schools do offer virtual training nowadays. Um, it's really as simple as, as Googling acting schools in New York City, and you're going to yeah. get a whole list of Lee Strasberg, uh, HB Studio, Penny Templeman, the Barrow Group. I can pop mm -hmm. these all in the chat at the end, um, but these Absolutely. are all super reputable um, acting schools that offer audition technique training. Um, there's so many coaches out there as well now who do one-on-one -on -one virtual training. Um, so there is a plethora of um, reputable acting schools. It's a lot more difficult to find reputable modeling schools. So I can also pop in the name, um, but there's also mother agents throughout the country who provide modeling training who are certainly reputable as well. It's just important to do your research, um, you right. know, you know, really look at what's available to you in your area, look what works within your budget. Um, and, you know, make sure that, you know, it's going to be, you know, doable, um, you know, long term. Absolutely. All right. So we have one more question in the Q&A. And this is this goes back to your agents, like you being an agent. Is there a such thing as having too many agents? Like, can you have more than one agent and it work for you? Absolutely. So this is a really good question. So most modeling agencies um, are per market. So usually you sign with MMG for New York City. That's what we're famous for. That's like what we're known for. Like I said, I've, I've booked work in other cities. I do Miami Swim Week. I do LA Fashion Week um, because I have these clients coming to me just because of my reputation in the industry. But right. I don't specialize in LA. I'm not booking print campaigns every day in Miami. So the mm -hmm. way that it works once you're, you know, kind of a bit more established is you typically have one agency for each major market. So you're going to have a New York mm -hmm. City agency. You're going to have an LA agency, uh, you know, depending on where you're, you're based out of. Like I have a lot of models who are with Ford Chicago and they're with MMG in New York. You know, Chicago, New right. York, easy, easy flights back and forth. I've got, you know, a lot of talent who are with Elite Miami and MMG in New York, who are with Dragonfly mm -hmm. in Dallas and MMG in New York. Now, a mother right. agent 
is different from being signed to an agency. So mother agents don't book work. They're not agencies in the classic sense. Mother agents sign talent, develop them, help them get training, photo shoots, education, whatever that might look like, cut their hair, dye their hair. Um, yeah. And then they place them with agents like me. So mother agents come to MMG and say, hey, I have this great girl or this great guy. Can you take a look at them? I'd love for you to sign them. Mm -hmm. So you can only have one mother agent and then you can be signed with multiple modeling agencies. Got it. All right. So, all right. I have one more question. One more question. <laughs> <You lied. laughs> I know I'm the last question to the last question. All right. What's the standard payment uh, to agents? What's the percentage that you guys, what's the standard percentage that you guys take? Absolutely. This is standardized across the country and really should never be deviated from. If you hear different rates from what I'm about to say, those are going to be some red flags. So 10% mm -hmm. on television and film and 20% on commercial and print work. Those are the standard commission rates that all the top tier agencies across the country work off of. If you're right. seeing different rates outside of that, um, that's something that's gonna be a red flag. And don't, please don't ask us to change our commission rates. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> I can't right. tell you when I get those emails, are you willing to be flexible? Um, mm. It comes off as unprofessional. It looks like you just haven't done your homework or learned what the industry standards are. So always be careful with that. And then mother agencies um, also will take a commission on the jobs that, you know, you book from the agencies they've placed you with. Um, and that can range from other agencies. So there's not an ex as, as a strict standard on that, but I would say the average is going to be 10% for mother agents. Gotcha. And we've got Chrissy Nori who just dropped an yeah, island. I she is one of our amazing, mature, adult, uh, lifestyle women. Check her out. She there has some awesome campaigns for us. We have some, you know, a hair care yes. campaign where she's getting all that gray, gorgeous hair sudsy. Um, she is a really, really awesome lifestyle model. So I'm so also glad to see her in the chat. We love our mature ladies. Yes. <laughs> Good. See, everybody can get love. Everybody from young to, to mature can get love around here. Okay. So remember, everything that we've done, we've given you a lot. We've given you guys a lot of information. Uh, Talia, is there anything else you want to say before we get out of here? Um, I really appreciate everybody coming today. This means a lot. It shows me you're invested in your career. It shows me that you, you know, are willing to put in the work, the time. You spent a whole hour with me to get today. So I'd love to invite everybody uh, to go ahead and submit for representation just because you showed up, you put in the work. That is awesome. I'm going to drop my email in the chat right now. Make sure you send the correct items. Get those digitals, professional mm -hmm. photos link measurements you got social media do the homework send it all make sure it looks good okay but i appreciate everyone coming in today and it just shows me that you're willing to put in the work and that's the type of people i want on my roster that's right make sure you guys you're putting in your research before you get in front of her tali is going to give you a chance but you got to do your part remember that all right so um without further ado guys we appreciate everybody for dropping in all your questions talia asked she answered all all of them and more. Uh, so I appreciate you, Talia, for your time. Uh, just take thank you for coming in for at least this hour to help us out, understanding a little bit more how to how to earn a living in commercial modeling and a little bit more. So thank you so much, everybody. Stay blessed, stay focused, and stay consistent out there. Uh, let's make sure that we're uh, logging on at allcast.com if you need to look up any castings as well. Make sure you go. Talia dropped a whole bunch of links in here where you can contact her. Uh, going to MMG to figure out what type of casting calls are going on there as well. So if there's nothing else, guys, I bid you adieu. I'll see you next time. Talia, I'll talk to you soon, hopefully. And um, you guys have a great day. All right. Thank you so much. And I, people are writing in the chat. They can't see the email. I've popped it in a yeah. couple of times. I'll just say it once really quickly as well. I'll drop okay. it a third time before I head out. Yeah. It is yeah. Talia, T-A-L-I-A at nymmg.com and I will drop it in the chat one more time for you guys right now. Thank you so much for coming. This was awesome. Yes. And everybody follow me on Instagram. Uh, drop my Instagram tag in there. It's going to be a little, a lot of things going on in the next two months. So join me.
in my journey. Talia, thank you again. I appreciate you. And you are super professional. And thank you for all your knowledge. Bye, everyone. Good luck. Bye. <laughs>